Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back. We have Alex Brown from Columbus, Ohio, back on the show once again to talk about the gear that we don't regret buying. So these are our top picks of things that we don't regret even the slightest bit buying. There, there's a few things out there where it's like, maybe a little, I, I maybe shouldn't have gotten that, but these are our solid picks. So Alex, why don't you start us off with your first pick? Yeah, I'd be glad to. Um, so it's actually the lights I'm using um, currently. They're Viltrox lights, which some people may be like, oh, Viltrox, like kind of cheap. These for kickers and like close interview stuff, perfect. They're the, I have the box right here, the the L116T. Um, they're only $30. And I mean, they like- Oh, wow. Yeah. I, they're, they're pretty decent, um, for like close, close contact stuff. Um, and they're battery powered and, um, they've got this really nice, like honeycomb, um, like soft panel on them. Um, and they're super nice. They're bicolor, um, like for the price and like what, what you get for them. Um, they're incredible, like absolutely incredible. And I, I feel like that's just lighting in general is one of those things where, you always need it. You always want to have something in your kit. So it's hard to regret going with the lighting choice there. And yeah. uh, I'm glad you mentioned these Viltrox options because I've been looking at the Aperture MC myself, but that's like a hundred bucks. So I, I yeah. might need to look into these Viltroxes. Uh, I, I want something for my hair light here. That's not just <laughs> a desk lamp. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for my first pick on gear that I do not regret one bit we're talking audio and that's going to be my tascam dr 70 d field mixer now i get so much use out of this thing not even just for when i'm doing video stuff but for like zoom calls especially in this day and age for wild sounds just anything that i might want to have some sort of sound going through i can do it with this tascam just using that line out and it is fantastic i just love having the option and i love that it's like it's an affordable option that gives me good quality audio. And I have that running straight into my camera right now for our audio. And uh, Alex, how do you think that sounds? I think it sounds great. Yeah. You actually talked me into buying yeah. one of those. Did I? I don't, I don't even remember that. Well, how, how have you been <laughs> finding it? Uh, I found that I don't use it a ton. <laughs> Just uh. because... <laughs> <laughs> Just because like I'm not in a ton of those scenarios for whatever reason. Um, but I mean, when I've used it, it's been good. <laughs> I feel like I'm shooting myself in the foot. We should have discussed this beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I guess it's just going to be a, kind of a, a use case thing. But even if you're not using it currently, and I think a big part of that probably is you have your C100 now where you have those mm. wonderful XLR quality inputs already. But I, I think it's still hard to go wrong with sound. Now, Alex, I'm going to toss it back over to you for your second pick here. Yeah, so it's actually the lens I'm shooting with right now. Um, it's the Sigma 24 to 70 art lens. Um, it's like specifically like the DG or something model, um, but absolutely incredible EF lens. Um, it's half the price of the Canon um, 24 to 70 and quite frankly, I think that it's kind of better. Um, that might be controversial to say. I don't know if you want to cut That's that That's a bold claim right there. <laughs> um, uh, the focus gears are a little loud, but I mean, I don't regret that. Um, I, I think it's a sharp lens. It's beefy, which I like. Um, the, the gears are good. Um, to, I, I have no regrets about it. I, I would say it's better than the 70 or the 24 to 70 Canon. So there you go. Just another one of those things, lenses, lighting and audio. It doesn't depreciate. It's going to hold its value. And it's just something you need in your toolkit to be quite frank. You don't want to be skimping out on those just like you don't want to be skimping out on your tripod. So for my tripod of choice, I am using the Satchelor Ace M tripod. This was my first real tripod. Yeah, you recognize the name Satchelor. 
Uh, <laughs> I've actually shown you this tripod in person once before, and the difference you feel between a real good fluid head like these Satchelor ones and some kind of jankier, cheaper options, it, it's a night and day difference. I use it all the time. I do not regret it one bit. And now let's toss it back over to Alex for our third option. Yeah, so my third one uh, is kind of a fun one. It was more of a toy um, to get when I was traveling around uh, with the Columbus crew, but it's a Samsung Gear 360. Um, it's the the second gen one, um, and it's a 360 camera. It does video. It does um, it does photos, and basically, I would take it like on all my trips and just like go around and like take 360 pictures of of the towns that I would go to and stuff. Um, and it's a I find that to be a more fun like way to like relive a photo because you can like look all around. Um, I know there's not a ton of ways to like view 360 photos, um, but I, I, I think it's really cool. And it just gives you something unique, something that is still easy to use. And I think that's a big part of the fun of it is it's easy to bring out with you and just try something new. And I think that's something really cool to look into. And for my third option here, my last option, we are going back to audio again. Now, this is going to be actually the microphone I'm wearing right here is my ECM55B Sony lavalier microphone. Nobody's heard of this thing. Nobody's looking for this thing. The reason that I do not regret this one bit is twofold. One, one, I'm going to hold up a finger. One, <laughs> one, I think that it actually sounds pretty good. And I think it's reasonably transparent to my ears. It's so hard to gauge your own ears, but when I've mic'd up anybody else, I've thought that it sounds reasonably accurate to how they actually sound. And I like the transparency of it. But the other part is that this only cost me 30 or 40 bucks when I bought it used off of a friend who bought it used from a marching band. <laughs> So these things retail for $300 or so, and they're still selling them new on B&H. But man, just 30 bucks, lavalier microphone that sounds fantastic and it punches way above its weight class, I think that is hard to miss up. Alex, uh, any closing thoughts before we go here? Yeah, I mean, research, research, research. <laughs> all, your, all your gear so you don't regret anything. It's funny enough, I don't think, I think the lens is the thing that I did the most research on though. <laughs> the, the lights and the, the gear 360 were just <laughs> kind of impulse buys. But look at you, but look at you now, you, you spent all that time researching <laughs> and it was worth it, it paid off. You, you loved your, uh, you love your lens that you got there. Yeah. And uh, I think from my end, my closing thoughts, I've touched on it before, but certain key aspects of production you will always need and it'll always be in demand. And that's sound, lighting, and stabilization. You need these three components to have high quality production consistently every time. And these things are not going to really depreciate in price that much over time, especially if you go used market to begin with. And with that, that's gonna wrap up our show. We will see you all next Monday or Friday. Take care, keep on killing it out there, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.